happy Saturday, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Today's Woman Show. My name is Renee Q. Boating, and today is going to be really, really inspirational. you find out why. We'll be right back. It's time for the woman on the move now. She is a go-getter. She is pressing on towards her goal. Let's see who she is. Genevieve's desire to start up a fashion school was born from the unsatisfactory experiences from her designers. She then left her well-paying job to pick up this challenge where she established a fashion school with the aim of also helping other women. Before Jenshila, I trained as a health coach. I was working with some other companies, but I have passion for fashion. So doing all those things, other people were sewing for me or stitching for me to sell. But when it comes to alteration, if there's a problem with the garment and we need to do something about it, they are reluctant to face it. That was what pushed me to the fashion school. The school offers a couple of courses, including business management, to enable students manage their own businesses after school. We run a one-year intensive training in fashion design, illustration, and business management. So that by the time you complete the one year, you will not only know how to stitch a garment, you will not only know how to put your thoughts and ideas into sketches and drawing, but also know how to set up your own business and be your own boss lady. Some students are excited about the school. I was working as a secretary. I left that for fashion because I love fashion. You can just walk up to a tutor if you have any problem at all. For them, it hasn't just been talking, talking, talking. They've built a relationship with us. I really didn't like anyone bossing me around, so I wanted to be a boss of my own. That's why I came to the National Park. It's been good. I've learned a lot. I stitch my own garments now. But why would you leave what you were doing earlier for fashion? Oh, that is where this is happiness. Anyone who wants to pursue fashion as a career and has the dream to be a fashion designer, I would recommend it to them that they should come to Jenshila Fashion Academy. It's where your dreams will be realized. Jenshila is a fashion school and a clothing line that is aimed at making a mark in the fashion industry. Unfortunately, the business suffered a temporary setback, but that will not deter her. It's not been smooth, but God has been faithful. Acquiring a place for the establishment of the school very, very expensive. If you want to do it right, I could have just done it anyhow, but I didn't learn it anyhow, so I wanted to do it right. Two years ago, we started with five students. Down the lane, we can comfortably boast of 60 students in all who are doing very well. With the numerous challenges, Genevieve, a mother of four, says she still makes time for family and work. Every African or Ghanaian woman, we are born entrepreneurs. You learn how to manage your time. You wake up, you take care of yourself, you take care of the house, you run other errands and take care of the house chores. And also how to handle your husband when you get married. If you're able to go through the process of training from infancy, it will be easier when you grow up. For now, Jen Sheila craves of seeing herself as one of the top most brands in fashion. In five to ten years time, we believe in God to expand to other regions. Currently, we can boast of students coming all the way from all the northern regions, Sekendi, Takaradi, Takwa, and the rest. Currently, we are opening a branch in Keta, in the Volta region, just to impact lives in that community. Yeah. 
Our winning woman for today is Vida Duty. Oh my goodness, I just read her profile and I'm like, wow, congratulations. Thank you. I have to say a huge congratulations. Thank we'll you. We'll tell them really? why I'm congratulating you. But tell us a bit about IRC, you're the country director. Thank you for having me. IRC is International Water and Sanitation Center. Mm -hmm. We focus on the delivery of water and sanitation services. Okay. Our head office is in the Netherlands. Okay. And we have branches all over the world mm -hmm. uh, because we are very African international, countries, so African in other, other Asian countries. Okay. And in Ghana, we have a branch office, okay. and that is the office that I'm responsible for. Okay. We are a team of 12 professionals mm -hmm. working with governments to look at wash solutions. Uh, mostly what we do is to pilot new ideas around the delivery of water and sanitation services, and then we bring the results to help to improve on government systems for the delivery of water so and you sanitation have to give us services. An example because this is like very, very high tech. I'm like, thinking, yes. No, so what is it? Is it like delivering pure water to what, the villages or what is it? No. For somebody who doesn't know anything about water and sanitation. Actually, we focus on the delivery and management of water services okay. and sanitation services. So we may have a project, mm -hmm. and in that project, we'll be working with district assemblies. So let okay. me take a typical example of one of the projects that we are implementing now okay. in the Sutifi North District. Okay. In the Sutifi North District in the Ahafo region, we are working with the district assembly. We are working with other health and grantee partners and the people and chiefs. And we have prepared a master plan to support everybody in the district with water and sanitation services. Oh, wow. So it involves developing the capacity of the assembly. It involves capacity of the project managers at the local level. It also involves working with the other partners to provide water services, so, so boreholes and all that. Because, I mean, you sound so passionate yes. and everything about it. How did you get involved? I've been in development for the past 20 years. Um, my initial work was with the National Council on Women and Development, okay. where I was involved a lot in um, supporting rural communities, mm -hmm. villages, and women in particular mm -hmm. with projects that would help to improve on their livelihoods. Mm -hmm. And then I followed up with work with the Social Investment Fund, um, Ghana Poverty Reduction Project. Mm -hmm. And we provided support to a number of communities aimed at improving on their livelihoods as and well. Is it really working? It is, is it? it is. Uh, you see villages that you visited previously that didn't have access to water, uh, children studying under trees, you go back and you find that the children are now well um, in classrooms and learning. Mm -hmm. So from the poverty reduction project, I moved on to work with the Canadian High Commission. So I was with the Canadian High Commission for about six years, okay. where we supported a number of communities, particularly in the three northern regions, okay. uh, with also social amenities. Mm -hmm. But then beside that, I was also working on the governance portfolio. So we worked with Parliament, we worked with the Office of the President, improving on the decision-making uh, processes uh, for the executive arms of government. Mm -hmm. From there, I moved on to IRC, um, starting off with a project called the Social Investment, uh, a project called the Triple S, Sustainable Services at Scale. Mm -hmm. uh, there, we did a lot of work with the Community Water and Sanitation Agency, looking at measures to improve on the sustainability of water services. Okay. And so when I got into water and sanitation, that has been about 10 years, Wow. My passion for water and sanitation grew, and I decided to, to stay but, there. But so we've been... Up, did you think you'd, I mean, find, be, be in something like this? Um, growing up, I had the desire to really support humanity mm -hmm. and what to led, support to the underprivileged. Actually, it's way back when I was about 11 years. Maybe tell us that story. I want to know. <laughs> yes. When I was about, about 11 years, my father... Uh, took me to a village mm -hmm. in Sehwi, okay. uh, called Sehwi Bodhi. Okay. Uh, originally, my father comes from Sehwi also, but the family had stayed in Sehwi Bodhi and took me and my siblings to Sehwi Bodhi. Uh, we were in Accra, but I think he thought that we were growing up in Accra and we didn't really know 
what it was to live in the countryside and, and really feel what people feel in the countryside. So he took us on a one year practicum to the village. We left wow. our school in Accra and then he took us to the village intentionally. Okay. So we lived in that village called Sehibodi where we schooled with all the people there. What was the purpose? The, the purpose was just to take us back home I mean, I'm to experience. Because, uh, growing up, what yes. my dad did, I mean, we didn't go to the village, but one thing he did one yeah. time, he got my siblings and I, he, we sat in the car, we got to 37, and then he told the driver, bring them home in Trotro. Oh, yours was very light. <laughs> <laughs> for us, it was for about a year. Wow. So we learned how to go to the riverside to carry water. Because those days, it was a very small village, they didn't have uh, water at homestead, and so we had to go to the village riverside. Oh, so that you would like um, appreciate what you had, or yes, you know, for to... us to appreciate what we had, and then also for us to feel for people. Mm. And since going through that childhood experience of carrying water on my head, living with the village children and going to school with them, going to the village mm. clinic, when I got back to Accra my perspective about life changed. They made you value what you and had. since then, I always had a desire to do something that would improve on humanity. Mm -hmm. And so after school, uh, when I studied development, I just decided that from one work to the other, I would support uh, uh, humanity. But then when I got into water and sanitation, I realized that that place is even more interesting. Wow. Water is life, sanitation is dignity. Mm -hmm. And so if you are able to work to at least provide people with that basic necessity of life, which is water, um, it's not dignifying uh, in this age to have people using water from untreated sources, wow. people defecating in the open. And so if you go to such a village and you go back and you see water gushing out, people have water on homestead, it's not just water to drink. Mm. Women now economically can attend to their other duties. Children are able to go to school instead of spending their whole time looking for water. Mm. It is very much fulfilling. Right. Mm. And therefore, I've been in this for the past 10 years. Wow, God bless you. Thank I you. I mean, this is a lesson for Thank me. You. My eye is opening to all of this because I'm like, wow. I mean, we just saw it as, you know, just like you said, just, you know, safe water to drink yeah. or to cook with or something. But it's deeper than that. It's giving the children the opportunity to go and study. And so God bless you for that. And it's amazing yeah. that every, I mean, I've, I've, I've spoken to so many different women here. And it's so enlightening, the passion. And I think God puts it in everybody what your purpose should be. Yeah. And this is probably what your purpose is. So you do deserve your award. I probably should tell everybody now. Oh, and congratulations on winning a hundred thousand US dollars. Tell us about that. How how did you even win that? Actually the award is from the OPEC Fund for International Development. O P I C. Yes. Okay. And it's it's in recognition of the work that I have done together with my team. I have wow. an amazing team. Congratulations, uh, IRC team, team uh, both in Ghana, in the Netherlands, and then also even with the sector, the support mm. that they provided, the government institutions, the civil society organizations, we've all worked together in achieving this. Wow. Um, so I was there one day in my office and I received a call. Uh, are you Vida Duty? I said, yes. He said, we are calling you from Vienna and you've won an award. I said, what award? Actually, it came as, as a surprise. surprise. So it wasn't so, anything you, like, it, it wasn't anything that you applied for or anything like no. that? No. Wow. So then I said, how did you get my name? Uh, how did you get information about me? So the guy said, for me, I'm just a messenger. I'm just delivering the message. Wow. So after receiving the call, I sat back and I said, where could this have come from? So I called my boss in the Netherlands and I said, this is what I just heard. Do you know anything about it? He said, oh, go and talk to our supervisory board chair. Apparently, our supervisory board chair was the one who nominated me for the award. You didn't know? No, oh, I wow. didn't know about it. And he had come here last year to see the amazing work that we are doing here. And I think he got impressed about that and decided to put in the 
um, nomination for us. They call for nomination globally, and then they select an individual or an organization, and then reward that organization wow. for the year. Wow. And so that was how come we found ourselves in uh, OFID and receiving this this wow. award. Um, actually, when I when I heard the message, I felt very humbled. Mm. I was overwhelmed, mm. uh, but I think that with God, everything is possible, and I give glory, all the glory to yeah. God for how far he has brought me That's and my amazing. team. That's amazing. That's amazing. And what is even so inspirational is the fact that you can be your own little corner thinking you're doing something, but it's, it's actually inspiring somebody, and you are being noticed. That's that, what I think that's what... That, that's what I... What's, when I came and I was talking to the staff, I said, look at us. We are yeah, in our small thinking, color. Yeah. And for me, the applause and global congratulations has been amazing. Wow. Uh, because we wow. work a lot at the international level, so we have a lot of international linkages. Mm -hmm. So you come to the office every day and your email is flooded <laughs> with congratulatory messages wow. from people that you haven't even read from and I think it's it's just by God's grace. So what, what what word would you give to a woman out there? You know, so it's it's normal to sometimes almost want to give up to think, oh, you know, it's so hard what I'm doing. Is anybody noticing? Am I making a change? You know, sometimes it's, it's sometimes it's almost down happening when you see what you're trying to achieve and you can't really see the results. I mean, you've been working, you've been doing this for so long and suddenly you've got such a recognition. So what word would you have for a woman out there? Like, almost like a word to say, you know, don't give up, you can do it. I think mm -hmm. that for uh, women out there, for me, you have to work and work selflessly. Um, you don't have to work thinking that someone must recognize and award my efforts. Mm. The first should begin with your inner fulfillment. Mm. Are you happy with what you are doing? And once you have that inner fulfillment, you'll be spared on to work very hard. Mm. Um, we, it, it's not a competition between men and women. Uh, if you're a woman and you find yourself in a position work to the best of your ability. I think as women, we even have exceptional and additional qualities that probably our men colleagues may not have. But if you go out there with the intention to rub shoulders and thinking that I'm comparing myself with men or with other women, you may not be able to succeed. Just focus and be yourself. Um, the other thing is also to be very humble. Um, I think humility is, it's, it's not just biblical, it's, it's a way of life. Mm -hmm. And once you are humble, every other thing will be, ha will be added to you. It will open doors for you. you. You have to establish good relationships. You have to establish good networks because that is what will take you from one level to the other. Uh, when I received this award, people that I worked with, when I finished school and I was doing my national service, my, my bosses, they all called, those in Ghana, those abroad, and I kept talking to them. I wrote to all of them to appreciate their contribution to my life. And so, just be yourself. And at the right time, your efforts will be seen and be rewarded. You mentioned competition, and, and that's one thing that um, sometimes I find that the, there's a saying that women, we are our own worst enemies. I mean, that's one thing I'm trying to combat and trying to discourage. Number one, we should stop saying that. I don't agree with that. But, it, we, you know, it's just general that women find other women sometimes intimidating. You know, like they, they, they see another woman doing so well and they're intimidated. So they read about you, read about what you've achieved. And, you know, the, I, you know, I keep saying that women should see each other as an inspiration and not as an intimidation. What do you think about that? You know, you said um, not rubbing shoulders with men. That alone is another issue yes. of women and women. I think, I think it is said, but personally, I have not experienced that. Mm -hmm. Because in all my career development, mm -hmm. those who held my hand from one stage to the other have been women. Do you think it's because of your personality? 
Personality also counts. Mm. I talked about being humble. humble yeah. I talked about also recognizing other efforts mm. and learning to establish uh, linkages and bridges mm. with others. No, bridges. no mm. you, you always go back to the same people. I started work with a woman, uh, Madame Eko Ansenshen, in Takradi when I was doing my national service mm. from school. From NCWD, when I got there, I was very green right from school she, you she you held know. my hand she 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 would talk to you she would take you to the meetings sometimes mm -hmm. she would throw you into very uh, high level meeting and then she would so ask she you to come back give me reports so, that, this is what we have so to do. give yes, others to opportunity and mm -hmm. then since i also started work i'm also working with women mm -hmm. um my immediate uh, assistant uh, our program manager is a woman you come to our office and the women are more powerful the, we have more women have at more the top no, no, we have to toast it's... to that we have to, <laughs> we have to toast to that congratulations thank you my dear mm -hmm. mm. yeah, tastes me. good mm. sorry let me take another one <laughs> Wow. So, wow. so I, you've never had any, have you had any like um, difficulties like when, when it comes to like gender equality, you know, there's the issue with women and men, you know, do you think that you'd be treated differently in your position if you were a man? It's something that I'm yet to experience. Mm. I've worked under men, I've worked under women. And like I said, I approach my work from a professional angle. Mm -hmm. I, I don't expect to be given special favors because I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. okay. And I also don't go about comparing what I'm due or I'm not due because I'm a woman or I'm so a man. So what do you think about feminism? Um, I think it's, it's a view that people hold. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if you are extreme, uh, it, it could affect your perspective about life because mm -hmm. you are, you are always um, putting meaning into issues. No, and, I'm asking this because uh, recently yes. I saw there was a there was a conference being held, and the topic was um, you know they were they were comparing feminism to a, a virtuous woman. You know, can you be a feminist and be a virtuous woman at, at the same time? You know, and it was sort of like a, a debate and an, an argument. What do you think about that? You know, being a feminist and then being a virtuous woman, being a mother, being a wife. Because some <sighs> people are saying that, look, I don't need a man in my life. Yes. And they are calling themselves feminists for saying that, that I don't need a man in my life. I'm not saying that. I'm very happy to have a man, <laughs> a man in my life. But I'm saying generally, some people, that's the stand, some women, that's the stand they are taking, that we don't need a man. We can do it all. That's the approach. I, I personally, I think that it takes two to make a whole. Mm. Um, there are things that, as women, we are exceptional at mm. doing. And there are other things that, as uh, men, can also come into our life to complement. Mm. Um, Biblically, uh, God created man and woman yes, uh, to, to, to come together mm -hmm. and, 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 and work. And it, it takes the two to make a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, people have their different beliefs. But I personally think that uh, you need to have, if God blesses you with marriage, mm -hmm. it is good to have. Mm -hmm. And if God blesses you with children, it is good to have. Mm -hmm. And it is possible for you to combine all and still be that woman that you are yeah, out there. Right. Uh, where you have to be strong, you are. Where you have to be soft, you, you, you yeah, are. Yeah. I so am a married, wisdom, yes, I'm a married it? woman. Mm. And I've been married for the past 20 years. Oh. My husband is also in the development field. Okay. And so for me, I get added advantage of having a companion at home yeah. and having someone who really understands my work. When I come home and I'm down, he appreciates and can give me the support that I need. I also have a child. My son is about 17 years old now in secondary school. And I didn't decide to stop work because I'm going to have a baby. I had to combine when my son was two months old Back to work. I went back to work with him, and those days I was working with the social investment fund, mm. working in all the those at that time ten regions of Ghana. Wow. So I carried him in baskets. Okay. 
when I'm facilitating a workshop, I'll have him beside me. Wow. And my staff, they will carry him for me. I'll give my son to you, carry my son for me. I'll finish facilitating, I'll go back for him. What I was trying to do at that time was to bring him also into my work. Mm -hmm. So when he was in primary school, after school, we'll bring him to my office, come and sit in my office, sit in the office, he will do his homework. When I'm traveling and he's on vacation, I go with him. So he understands my work. Mm -hmm also knows that mommy is there working but at the same time she's also there with her interest and therefore um, a strong stand I need a man in my life before I can make it and also for women you you also don't just have to sit back and think that without a man in your life you cannot make it mm -hmm. uh, if God blesses you with them in your life fine if not move on uh, well, going can back, make it. I, I'm just I'm just thinking about this. I mean, growing up, my father was so strict, you know, and was like, you know, you have to do this. Yeah, growing up, I actually thought he didn't love me, seriously. Now I look back and I'm like, he was such a blessing because he really made us. I mean, sometimes that, I mean, for that instance, I told you about how he made us go to Accra, you know, and say take a torture back. He said, this car, all the cars I have and everything, they are mine. I worked for it. You have to know how to work for it. So, so it was like a sort of discipline that he was instilling in us. Now, at that point where your father took you to the village and all that, how did you feel? And looking back, is that something you advise parents to, to, to take their children through, to give them like real life experiences, for them to sort of value what they have? Actually, when my dad took us to the village, we really, at that age, didn't understand. Mm. Uh, at some point, we thought it was punishment. <laughs> at some point, too, sometimes we felt something different. Um, it's not the same as being in Accra and living in your small kana. Mm. But then we also felt the good extended family mm, community. relationship community mm -hmm. life, uh, when there's a funeral, you all go, and then you enjoy yourself. Eating together. Eating together. Initially, we didn't really like it. It's like when they bring other children and you are served, it's not your food. Mm -hmm. Any other Everybody. child there, they will ask them to come and eat with you. But with time, we got to enjoy that. Mm -hmm. uh, when I went to the village, I said, oh, I need to put the village children together. So I put them together. We formed the cultural troop. And then we would, I, I taught them how to do, how to dance and Yourself? all that. Yes, myself. And then during festive occasions, we would move from one place to the other to go and sing and, and dance. I was just enjoying myself as, as a wow. child. Initially, I didn't understand. But coming out, I, I came to appreciate that. My dad was also a very strict person, mm -hmm. yet a very loving man. Mm -hmm. And where we needed to be straightened up, he will, mm. where he needed to embrace us and give us all the, the support that we required, he, he did that. Mm. And I'm, I'm also doing the same for my son. So I was going to ask I told, you, that how are you bringing <laughs> your son up in, this, in, this, in that view? My, and what advice would you give to women out there as well, you know, for, for, as to how to bring out our children and just how to live our lives to be good mentors to other, to other younger ones out there? Um, my son, I think what I've told my son is that I've been brought up to be able to live with every situation, uh, to, to, to sit, engage with the least person, and at the same time be able to engage with the highest person. And I was able to do that because of the kind of orientation that my dad and my parents, my mother gave me. He, I'm also giving him the same exposure. Mm. So I travel with him to the village. You do? Yes. The first time he went to the village, he looked at the village setting. He came up to me and said, Mommy, this village is not finished. Wow. I said, that is your perception of mm. unfinished uh, mm. village. Because he said the roads were not tied. Mm. The, the buildings didn't have... How old uh, was he then? He was about 70 years. And that's what he said? Yes, and wow. was like assessing, comparing. comparing. And I said, yes, that is their perspective. That is where they live. Mm. So he, he went with me to the village. And I, as I said, I travel a lot abroad for my work. When I'm traveling abroad, it's he also him, goes with right. me. So he goes to see that and then come back. And I said, I'm not sending you there, but I want you to look at the other perspective of life. Mm and be motivated 
one day to also become a responsible person so how can to grow Ghana. How can be a responsible, like, you know, citizen of Ghana? How can we all, each and everybody, develop our country? Because a lot of the time we're always complaining and the government, the government, the government. But if each and every one of us are to, like, invest something in our community, in our country, you know, how can each and every one of us help to develop our country? I think that um, the sociologists will say that the behavior of a person is the product of the person's social environment. And I think it begins from the home. Mm -hmm. uh, most parents now, when we complain about our children, we think that they should receive all the training from school. Mm -hmm. But then as parents, uh, we are very busy. We are all over the place working. But then we should also know that we have a responsibility at home. It is not just about going about after titles. It's not about going after awards. It's not just about making money. But it's also what you leave at home. And so having that good work and uh, family life balance, balance is key. Do you have time for your home? Do you have time for your children? Um, it's very good. And so we should be able to train these kids to be responsible, responsible in the home. When you, when you are walking about in the house and it's daytime and the light is on, be responsible to put off the light. Yeah. Yeah. When you are walking about in the house and you see something thrown out there, be responsible about that. Mm -hmm. And you then take that one to school you can also support your other colleagues in school. And then also, as you even walk on the streets, do you look around? Do you see something that is not going well? And what do you do to, right. to correct it? So if we are able to do that from the home, uh, I think if we are all responsible in the home, uh, together we get change. responsible yeah, society yeah, and we get responsible tell, nation. Anybody don't do that, you would know. No, you naturally. Yes, yes, yes. Naturally. So sometimes you are driving around and you see people throwing. I mean, sometimes I just get so frustrated. You know, pure water sachet, just throwing it out of the car like that. Who should pick it up? You can imagine. You, know? you can imagine those of us in water and sanitation yeah. business. Sometimes yeah. you are sitting in your car and it's like. No, but you know, yesterday was a holiday fight. and we went yes. to the beach and I was so surprised, Coco Bite Beach, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've been there before, yes. but then we, I mean, the last time I went there was some years ago and I was so surprised that the water, if it looked, wasn't as clean as it looked before, the, the beach, I mean, like, I didn't even feel like going in to swim because before the water was quite, like, almost clean, now it was almost brown, I mean, the water coming and everything, it wasn't even clean, the beach. You know, so the, and, and people were there drinking and throwing it, you know, and, and all of that. So it can be, but we really need to educate children out there and everything. So how can each and every one of us educate? What, 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 what would you say that we can, you know, if, if we're to go to the villages and things, what message should we take there? What can I do to help you? I think that we are all, as human beings, connected in one way mm -hmm. or the other. First, you are from a home. And so in your own small home with your nuclear family, uh, you need to provide that education and orientation to them. Uh, we go to our villages. Uh, we go for funerals. We live with our aunties, our uncles, in our own small way. Uh, when we are talking about family issues, we also discuss um, mm -hmm. sanitation issues. Mm -hmm. um, we should take that responsibility home. If you should maybe have a funeral at home, mm -hmm and you go to the village, would you be able to go with some litter beans? At least you can go with litter beans. Mm. Use it for the funeral. After that, you can donate it to the community so that right. whenever yeah. there's a funeral, they can, they can use for that. I've been encouraging people. We're talking a lot about opinification. Mm. In the villages, there are a lot of households without uh, toilet facilities. Yeah. If those of us in Accra, if we can and can afford, if we can all commit to support one household back home so do, with how, a toilet, how do we, do that? we will be able to can move we do forward. That you? Um, there are some philanthropy uh, organizations. organizations that we can root resources to. Um, we also want to begin to even champion that campaign. Mm. One toilet in my home village. Mm. No, I'm saying so that then you can. 
We complain, complain, complain. And people have resources. They don't even know where to take it to. That's it. You know, so who, because it's, can we even trust that when we take it, it will be built, it will be done, you know, all of this. And it, it's eye-opening. It's very, very good that you've come here today. You know, we learned so many things on this program, but this is really good. This is real. You know, so rather than complain and everything, we are all from a village. You know, and we we can we can start from today. We mm. can set up um, a fund uh, to support households mm. back home. Um, it's something we've discussed in the office, and we haven't really established it yet. Okay. So I think Where, what I'll do is I'll be in touch with you, and once yes. we put it together, you'll come back again, and then and we'll, we'll talk about we'll it. Talk about yes, it, it be can great. it can be the That'll beginning be great, of something yeah. great. Where we can set up that fund, and those willing to support households back home can do that. Yeah. But then there are also, even in the villages, a lot of uh, uh, guys that can be developed as work guys mm. who can go from home to home to support. If you have an auntie, you have an, an uncle, you go to your home village, you ask them, can I use the toilet? And they say, we don't have a toilet. Mm. You can go back and give them money to build a simple toilet mm. where next time when you go, yeah, you'll be days. able to use. Yeah. So that you don't go and sleep sleep in the hotel and yes. then you leave them <laughs> you leave them yeah. you leave them yeah. behind. Yeah. So Auntie Vida, I have yeah. to congratulate you again. You've done Thank such an you. amazing, amazing job. Congratulations on your award. And what are you planning on doing with it? You've won a hundred thousand US dollars. Wow. What are you planning to do with it? I think um God has blessed me so much. Um, it is not that I have money in abundance, but I think society has also been very kind to me. Mm. And so my intention is to give this money back to society, wow. to support the underprivileged, uh, particularly to address the challenge of water and sanitation. Mm. As a country, we have made progress uh, in support to water and sanitation but we still have a long way to go. Mm. And we are working towards providing everybody with water and sanitation services by the year 2030. Wow. Um, <laughs> I want to give this back to society. Wow. You know, in our conversation, I told you about a little village that my dad took me yes. to when I was 11 yes. years. My first plan is to go back to that little village. Wow. Um, they have a... make you a queen mother. <laughs> <laughs> they have a... They have a uh, now there's water. They have a small town water system, and there's a there's a little village clinic. Okay. I called my uncles, and I was told that that village clinic has only two toilet facilities, mm -hmm. serving both the staff and people and who patient. come, patients who mm -hmm. come. They they also have issues with reliability of their water services. Mm -hmm. So my intention is to visit the village. Wow and then go to so this clinic and then apply some of the resources to improve on the water and sanitation situation. I want to also invest the rest of the money. Mm -hmm. There's been so many occasions that I've gone out there to the field. I've seen situations that I wish I had a quick turnaround quick money to, yeah. that I can use mm -hmm. to support. And therefore, when I come across such situations, my intention is to apply some of the resources wow. to, to support. God bless you. God bless you. You have a good heart. Yes. God bless you. And this is so, so, so amazing yeah. what you're doing. Women, I mean, like, I am so, so, so inspired. I'm so pushed. I feel like you'll be hearing from me soon. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Today's Woman Show. It's so, 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 I'm so, so inspired today. I'm so encouraged, and I can't thank you enough for coming. Uh, we have a gift for you, and I'm sure you're taking this back to your village. Yes. I'm sure you're <laughs> taking this to the village. There are so many things. There are exercise books in here, sanitary pads. This is from Yaz, mm. and they are one of our major sponsors, and they are really pushing for me to be able to bring amazing women like you to inspire women out there. So I thank them so much for one of my sponsors, Yaz, and this is a gift for you. There's so many different things in there that I, I know you know what to do with it. Yeah, and I have a special gift for you as well. Yeah. So I'm really encouraging women out there to, um, 
to, to love themselves. To I, I call mm. this the Renekew love pillow, mm. okay? A little squishy pillow. Sometimes you just feel so down. Sometimes generally mm. there's so much you can say about somebody else. Sometimes very little you can say about yourself. But I'm really encouraging women to, to always promote yourself, you know, to tell yourself I'm good enough. I'm doing an amazing... I hope you do tell you because you are doing an amazing job. But I want you to say it to yourself all the time. Now this is a gift from me to you. And anytime you look at it, I want you to tell yourself one thing you love about yourself. Mm. And I want you to tell us as well. Congratulations. You deserve oh, even much more. Thank you. You're doing an amazing thank job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. And thanks for the <laughs> gift from Yas, um, the sanitary parts, the exercise books. I think it will go a long way um, to support uh, a lot more people. Yeah. Uh, our work also involves menstrual hygiene. Oh, wow. For okay. girls in school. Okay. And so um, it will be a wonderful gift for also from me to other girls who probably absent themselves from school right. because, because they are in their menses yeah. yeah. and they are not able to yeah. go. So, and the exercise books, yeah. definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. And thanks for this. Yeah, very, very I welcome. love this, really. Thanks. So one thing, tell us one thing that you can look in the mirror and say, ah, I love you so much for... Give us one reason, one thing you love about yourself. <laughs> one thing I love about myself is my love for people. Mm. I, I feel fulfilled uh, when I see that in my own small way, I'm able to put smile on the faces mm. of the people. I think everybody who has encountered me in one way or the other, I want to leave that warmth with them. And people tell me I have a nice smile. So I try to smile a lot because I think that is what I also bring to people mm -hmm. uh, to make them happy. Um, well, smile. ladies, I hope you smiled when you heard that. <laughs> I love that so much. And I'm glad that you said mm -hmm. that, seriously, because a smile can really brighten the day. Some, I mean, let's not even go into how I was feeling when I walked in here, but I saw your smile and I just felt uplifted. So you are really doing a good job. Ladies, keep smiling. You are Today's Woman. We'll be right back. Thank you so much for joining us today on the Today's Woman Show. Don't miss it next week, Saturday, 11 a.m. on TV3 and DSTV channel 279. And I really hope you took one thing, even if you took just one thing, I hope you took it to keep that spirit of humility. I'm so, so, so inspired by our winning woman today. After everything she's achieved, she's still ever so humble and pushing on with the passion to develop our country, to develop her village, to develop everybody around them. That should be your spirit because you are today's woman. Many thanks to my sponsors, Moving Pick Ambassador Hotel. Thank you so much for this lovely set. Many thanks to GTP, to Yaz, to Renee Q Love Clo. Thank you so much. You are making it possible for us to empower women out there. And this is all we are about. Thank you so much and God bless.